All right, chapter 10, more on functions. In this chapter, we're going to learn about function return values and function modifiers. So in the last one, we talked about private and public functions. And modifiers are going to be really good because you're not just limited to a private or a public function. You can instead be like, I only want the owner of the smart contract to call this, or I only want a certain wallet address. Like, let's say you have a team of admins and you only want them to be able to call a function. That's something you can do. And private and public is not good enough for that. But with modifiers, it gives you the functionality to customize a modifier in in any way you want. So let's start. So return values. To return a value from a function, declaration looks like this. Return greeting. So if you've written in C++ or Java or majority of the languages that are object oriented and have returns, it's pretty much the same thing. So in Solidity, the function declaration contains the type of the return value up here in the signature as well. So that's kind of the difference with Solidity and Java. So that's it for return values. And then now function modifiers, which I was just talking about. The above function doesn't actually change state in Solidity. It doesn't change any values or write anything. So in this case, we could declare it as a view function, meaning it's only viewing the data, but not modifying it. So function say hello public view returns string memory. That's the return type. So you can put view when it's just something that is it's not really going to change anything. It's not writing any data. It's not changing this variable. It's just giving you a return greeting. No. You can do a pure function, which means you're not even accessing any data in the app. So, for example, return A times B. So that's taking parameters and returning a calculated value through the parameters. That's kind of what a pure does compared to what a view does. So it's because this function doesn't even read from the state of the app. It just returns a value only on its function parameters. So in this case, we would declare the function as pure. Yeah, and this just states that you'll get warnings if you don't do it. So it's kind of a reminder in the compiler, which is great. So now let's put it to the test. We're going to want to help a function that generates a random DNA number from a string. So let's see, create a private function called generate random data. All right. Function generate random data. Okay. It'll take one parameter, which is a string. Now, whenever you do string, you need to write string memory underscore SDR. It's going to return a unsigned integer. So returned you int. Actually, you'll put that as the last one. Don't forget to set the data location of the string parameter to memory. That's what we did right there. Okay, cool. This function will view some of our contracts variables, but will not modify them. So let's mark it as a view. Okay, check answer. Looks good.